We are here at Big Ten Media Days with Maryland head coach Mike Loxley. Coach Lox came in talking about an airport delay, 14 <laughs> hours in Tortola. Uh -huh. Your man Joel, Joel, getting stuff done. That that sounded inspiring. That story of Joel, the uh, the magazine yeah. cart the guy, stand guy, cart guy, unbelievable. And I, again, you know, imagine a, a great vacation mm -hmm. with your family, and you're looking forward to finally getting home, and then you get there early in the morning yep. and they tell you your flight's canceled but and, and then you're asking like well when are we what's the answer and you're getting zero answers from the airline and now we're stuck in this area where it's small a small little airport in tortola and you've got you got joel with his little stand that kind of has the uh those uh, patties i guess that oh, yeah. you call he had his own tv i mean this guy was like going around hey if you want to watch netflix i can put some <laughs> i mean the airline has given us no love, and this guy is going above and beyond. And to me, it was like an aha moment. Like, you know, when you deal with NIL, you deal mm -hmm. with all these things with the players. You know what? Good customer service is hard to find. And so I, one of my things with our staff and with our coaches is, you know what? Let's have great customer service by creating the best experience mm -hmm. we can create going through the change that we're seeing in, in, in college football. I've thought about that as this stuff has been going on. I've talked to a lot of coaches about this because everybody asks you, well, how do you keep players with the transfer portal? I've always thought if you have a program where people enjoy playing and they feel like they're they're moving toward their goals, most of them are going to stay. Uh, it's still transactional. But oh, yeah. yeah. I, I do think if somebody comes in with a bunch of money, I, yeah, you're going to do what you're going to do. But I do think but, what you're saying is yeah. what my approach has been is, you yeah. know what, yeah, people – want money and they want to be able to be paid for their name image and likeness but i also think there's something to be said about service mm -hmm. something to say about programming that allows you to create value for yourself yeah. maybe not now but mm -hmm. down the road and that's where you know leading into the mentorship program that we've been selling recruits and if you talk to anybody that's in our program or that's left our program they'll tell you that's one of the best things we've done because here you have CEOs of Fortune 500 mm -hmm. companies serving as personal mentors. And this isn't just, oh, I'm your mentor and we talk once a year. We right. have a legitimate process and, and each plan. Each player gets put each with somebody Each player like this. gets put with a influential business leader, political guy, big, big, big person in the DMV community. Mm -hmm. And they become basically, outside of football, a go-to person for life after football. When did you come up with that idea? How, how did you come up with that idea? <laughs> well, it, it's uh, it's ironic because I tell the story. Uh, it's I was recruiting a kid, Nicholas Petit Faree. Oh, yeah. At Alabama. Yeah, from Tampa. From Tampa, Berkeley Prep. Yep. And I can remember Coach Saban and I going into his home to do the home visit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Coach Saban is one of the best closers in football. And I had been recruiting him for two years, and you set the table for a Coach to come in and close it. And his mom asked a question about, tell me more about players that don't make it to the NFL because, mm -hmm. you know, we have our spill. Coach puts players in the league. Right. But she asked a question about players that didn't make it, and it's not that we didn't have players at Alabama that didn't make – that when they didn't make it that we didn't have opportunities for them. Right. But I don't know if the answer that he gave was what she was looking for. Right. And I took a mental note that if I ever get a chance to run a program again yep. – when they ask me about a p players that don't make it to the NFL, I want to be able to say, hey, you know, I've got a guy that's uh, Namdier Bourbois that's an upper-level manager at Pepsi. Yeah. And the reason he is is because his mentor, Craig Kushner, who ran the largest vending company in the USA, um, Monumental Foods, had connections at Pepsi that were made based on the relationship oh, yeah. that those two created along their and that's, time And Maryland. that's what the parents want to hear. And, yeah. Nick, went to Ohio State mm -hmm. where they had a, a life after football program right. they had installed years earlier. So no it's interesting how it. that works. Well, speaking of offensive line, you had a couple offensive linemen drafted last year. Your talent level on the line of scrimmage seems to have risen considerably in your time there. How did you go about doing that? We got older. You know, those three guys, that two guys that got drafted and the third that we brought in, Jahari Branch, Jalen Duncan, Spencer Anderson, mm. those guys were four-year, three-year starters for us that, as you know, it takes two or three years for old linemen to really right. be able to hold up, especially in a league like the Big Ten. And So I think those guys got older. We did a really good job in their developing. Mm -hmm. But I think what you'll see more than anything is that we are able to develop some of the younger players behind them. I mean, they're four-year starters, but, you know, taking the Saban approach of, playing younger players 15 20 plays a game right win lose or draw 
because yeah. you're always trying to develop the the back part of your roster for 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 the future. Is that hard sometimes when when you it know is, you got to get some you want to get somebody in, but th this game is tight. And you know what? For assistant coaches, it might be, but for me as a head coach, it's, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Because you have every opportunity. You got four quarters to put them in the game, and if you get them in early instead of waiting <laughs> yeah. to where it's a close game, and now you you kind of holding on, saying, "Man, I don't want to put them out there." So, no, I mean, let's get those guys on the field. I mean. Sometimes they, they hurt you, yeah. but you know what? In the long run, it's going to benefit us as a whole, and that's what my job is as the head coach, to lead that vision. New guy on your staff, not a new guy to us, Kevin Sumlin. He's Sumlin. a new new offensive coordinator. How's he doing at, You know, coming back to college after, after a little bit of USFL action? Yeah, you know, I think the best thing, and I went through this, and I, I this was a selling point for me with Summy was, you know, when you sit in the seat that I sit in, as an assistant, you have an appreciation if you've been there before. Yeah. And I can remember when I got let go at New Mexico and I came back and was an assistant under Randy Etzel, knowing some of the things that he was going through, I had I had a sense of empathy that, mm -hmm. you know what, I need to do my part to help take some stuff off a of coach. Yeah. And that's what Summy's been for me. That's what Latrell Scott, you know, everybody talks mm -hmm. about Summy, but having a guy like Latrell Scott, who was one of the fastest rising guys in college football, yep. taking Richmond to a, a FCS championship uh, game and having him with head coach experience, with all the time that I'm having to spend on roster management, yeah. NIL, transfer portal, having guys that I can bounce things off that have, have been in that chair and take things off my plate has been has been a, a, has been a great a asset for me. And that's something you've done since you've been the head coach. Yeah. You've had and Ron Zook was yeah. in there, Scotty Montgomery. How, yeah. how important is it to have that person who's been in the, the big chair it's and understands what you're dealing with? You know what? It's something that I want. Yeah. You know, I'm not a prideful guy in that, you know, sometimes head coaches maybe are shy away from another head coach coming in and, you know, having to hear that, hey, but I, I want to make it better. You know, who we are on offense, defense, special teams don't change philosophically, but you can add to it or you can figure out a way to do it better. Mm -hmm. And if you bring in new guys or guys that have run programs that have new ideas, uh, that helps me big time. All right, Mike Loxley, we are going to try to be like Joel, the newsstand guy. Out. Customer service, man. Shout out to Joel over there <laughs> at uh, Ledbetter, uh, Ledbetter Airport. All right, appreciate it, Coach. All right, thanks.